I'm back. And today we're planting our first greenhouse tomato crop of 2024. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Wishwell Farms. First off, I wanna apologize for my long hiatus from the Farm Channel. In 2023, I broke the Farm Channel away from my main backpacking, kayaking, RV camping channel, and was intending on filming our entire farming season and putting it out there on YouTube for you guys. Uh, I gotta admit, I, I kinda lost the desire to film the farm life, and I concentrated on my other channel. But it's a new year. I feel reinvigorated to document our entire 2024 growing season for you guys. I'm gonna do my best to take you guys along for the ride the entire season of 2024. Uh, I had a lot of things get in the way last year and I really was focusing on my other main channel. Um, I don't have anything on that channel kind of uh, taking up all my time right now. So I'm really gonna try to concentrate and focus on growing this farm channel and documenting our day-to-day -day activities and do my best to put out one to two videos a week of everything happening around the farm. So I hope you join us for the journey and I'm looking forward to sharing everything along the way. Well, let's get started. So today I am seeding 14 flats. 10 of these flats will be for uh, greenhouse number one. And then we're gonna be doing four uh, for our grape tomatoes. Normally we have these things seeded by the first week of January, but I had a Florida vacation and I didn't want to have baby plants for someone to tend to while I was down in Florida. So I have them all laid out here right now. We're getting ready to water these rock wool slabs. This is rock wool and there are 98 little divot holes in each slab and 10 of these. So 1, 000, basically 1,000 will be for our, uh, our red round beefsteak type tomatoes in greenhouse number one and the other four will be planting number one of our grape tomatoes. So I'll get into more of the details about the varieties and um, how we decide and what to plant here later on. And right now we're gonna get these uh, flushed out with water and get them back inside in our nice warm house, get them seeded, and then downstairs in my basement on the heating pads to get them germinated. Here are this year's hydroponic tomato seeds got about three thousand dollars worth of seeds there they are not cheap i think the average cost was over 87 cents per seed this year so you better know what you're doing when you're planting these things we'll get into more of variety selection and how i seed these once we get them all wetted down and back in my house where it's warm this greenhouse is not heated today it's probably only 35 degrees in here so these will all be germinated in my basement on heat mats and then i also have grow lights down there we will keep them down there for approximately 20 days and then we'll bring them back out here into this bigger greenhouse and get them spread out into uh, their bigger grow blocks where they will remain until we fire up the main greenhouse in about seven or eight weeks from now So there's two reasons that I wet these cubes down. One is to flush out any impurities in the rock wool. It supposedly is inert and nothing in there at all. But I have had one year where the seeds didn't grow right. So I was told to really flush those out good just to remove any impurities. And I'm just using fresh well water. Ideally, you'd want to use pH corrected water. Um, I don't but as soon as those seeds sprout here in about four or five days and they need their first watering i will start watering them with ph corrected water of about 5.5 to 5.8 ph and also at that time i will start introducing a light fertilizer for them for optimal growth uh, the other reason we flush them out or water them is because you need moisture to germinate seeds right so this will give them the moisture, and then when we get them down to my basement on the heat mats, I'll cover the, on the heat mats, I will cover them up, and that's where they will get the heat to germinate. All right, these are our favorite tomato varieties. 
Geronimo, Torero, and a new one we're trying this year, Ondero, that is replacing Foranti. These are all indeterminates and bred for growing in greenhouses. This is our favorite grape tomato. After years and years of trial and error, we have settled on Ruby Crush. This is a determinate tomato. And one other one that we don't have this year that we normally do is Big Dina. It was a crop failure this year, so no Big Dina seeds. All right, all 14 flats are seeded, and now we are going to cover the holes with vermiculite. It just helps keep the seeds anchored down inside the rock wool better, and I believe just a better germination overall. Doesn't take very much. Yep, just like that, kind of covers the seeds up a little bit, almost like putting dirt on them in a the garden. All right, now that all the vermiculite is on, we're gonna stick this little temperature probe down into the flat. And this is how we're going to control the temperature of these heat mats. I'm only going to have it set on 60 because when I cover this to keep the heat in, it'll even though this is only set on 60, it's going to be closer to 85, which is about what we want. So we're going to keep it covered and at 85 degrees for about three days. And as soon as I see a few of the seeds popping up and germinating, I will remove the cover and turn the heat down to uh, about 70. And this is how I will keep a close eye on the temperature. I have these uh, four little thermometers and I will scatter them throughout and I'll check them periodically through the day to make sure we're right at uh, 82 to 84 degrees for three days. Got my four thermometers in. Now let's get it covered. So I'm just gonna cover it with a piece of plastic them and kind of tuck it in underneath so mice can't get in there. If mice get in here, they can devastate the entire flat in a night. And that is costly. And then I'll have a piece of reflectix that will go on top of that. critical to keep this temperature right at around 82 degrees for three days. If it gets any hotter, um, it can damage the seeds. We'll have bad germination. And if I don't remove this cover immediately after I see germination, the seeds will sprout up like spaghetti noodles and be worthless and have to start, oh no, I'll have to start over. So uh, very important to keep a close eye on these. And as soon as I see the uh, first couple seeds starting to sprout up, I'll remove the cover and get it turned down to 68 to 70 degrees and that'll produce a kind of a, a shorter stockier plant so a uh, very important part of the process is getting these things germinated well and paying close attention to the germination over these next three days and watching the temperature closely alrighty folks that's a wrap on the very first tomato seeding of 2024 we have about five more seedings left throughout the next couple months but I'll bring you back here in a couple days after the seeds have germinated and sprouted and we have the covers removed. And we're gonna be discussing a little bit more about the importance of light and the heat and fertilization. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching.